Hello there everybody, this is Dax, and today I wanted to introduce you to this cool little dude right here. Now, depending on who you talk to, he may be a bear, he may be a bunny rabbit. I can see the arguments for either one, so we're just going to call them bunny bears. And today, I am going to teach you how to make one of these. For me, what these guys represent is unconditional kindness. Yes, they represent the act of simply being kind to someone for the sake of being kind to them. Not wanting anything in return, just that little bit of joy you feel when you make someone else a little bit happier. And so, I like to make these guys and just give them away. Um, family, friends, loved ones, co-workers, random people on the street. I make them and I hand them out. And I hope that you will do the same. Now here are the items that you will need to make one of these bunny bears. First of all, you will need three pipe cleaners. Um, Pipe cleaners are one of those things that because of political correctness or whatever it is, I don't know what caused it, uh, somehow they decided to change the name from pipe cleaners to fuzzy sticks. This is something I can't really argue against because they are in fact fuzzy and a stick, but they're pipe cleaners, that's what they are, pipe cleaners, fuzzy sticks, same thing. You'll need three of these. Next of all, just a simple ballpoint pen, maybe a pencil. What matters is that it is a cylinder, a hard cylinder, that is about this size. Now you want the straight cylinder. You do not want to use an ergonomic pen or pencil or anything like that. You don't want anything with bumps or lumps or ridges that will cause problems later on with what you're planning to do. But just a simple pen or pencil, barring that, just a cylinder of some kind that is this size and is sturdy enough for what we're going to use it for, which is just to wrap the pipe cleaners around. Finally, what you'll need are two beads. Right now I've just got three colors of beads. All of these are wood, but these beads here, this one's almost white in color, and then you've got a reddish brown color, and here you've got a pretty caramel color. And not all of them are even round. You've got this one here that is kind of cube-shaped. This one here's got some ridges around it. So. The shape doesn't matter, the color doesn't matter, what does matter is that it's about this size. This is about half an inch in size. Uh, sorry, I apologize to those of you who live in countries on the metric system. Uh, I'm guessing it's a centimeter and a half, maybe. My metric knowledge is very rusty. It's one of the downsides to living in the United States is you know, you're, you're not really going to spend time learning measurement systems that you don't have to know. But one thing that you can do is look at it and see here, this is about the same width as my pointer finger. So you can use that for a size reference if you need to. Um, but yeah, you'll need two beads. I prefer to use two beads of the same color and the same shape. This is not necessary. You don't even need to have three pipe cleaners of the same color. Feel free to play around with it, enjoy it, have fun. I just happen to want to be making mine with three purple pipe cleaners here. And I am going to use the same color and shape of beads as well. But what I'm going to do, got the three colors here, and I'm going to kind of do a color comparison to decide what color I want to make. And I'm thinking let the caramel with the purple 
the color on the camera here might be off, but it looks to me like, here in person at least, the caramel and the purple make a nice match. I'm noticing here in the monitor that my pipe cleaners are looking more blue on the screen than they are in person. These are more of a true purple color here in person. And this looks like a good color combination. So I'm going to use the caramel color, but do I want to make it round or square? And today I think I'm going to go with the round color, or the round shape rather. Um, it's just appealing to me right now. One thing that you'll want to do on the beads is you'll want to look at the holes on both sides, make certain that they're open enough. This one here mostly looks good, but there's a little bit of closure on it, so I'm going to take my pocket knife here and just swipe it out real quick, open it up just a little bit more. It is important that the hole be big enough that you can place two pipe cleaners through it at the same time. And when you look at these beads, Normally, one is just a little bit larger than the other. It's because these are made out of wood. If I was using plastic beads, I probably wouldn't even have to gauge the size. But on wood beads, one is usually slightly larger than the other. I prefer to use the smaller one for the head and the larger one for the body. So the first thing that we're going to do, once again, here's the cool little dude that we're making. Let me turn them around so you can see the front. Uh, I've made enough of these things that I have determined that one is the front and one is the back. Uh, you may or may not care about it either way. But the first thing that we're going to make on this guy are these ears. The bunny ears that may be large bear ears, depending on if you think it's a bear or a bunny, or a weird genetic mutant but whatever we're gonna make the ears first so the first thing we'll do is we'll take one of the pipe cleaners slash fuzzy sticks and I've just learned from doing this over and over again like I said I like to hand out a lot of these um, one of the things that I've learned from making these over and over again is that my finger is just about the right width for what I want here on the end. And once again, it's about the same width as a bead. So you can always use the bead to determine how far to go in if you're not certain about the size of your hands. But what I do is I just hold on to it like that, one finger width in, and I just give it a good 180 degree bend. You see that? Just a 180 degree bend. And then another 90 degree bend. And there you've got an ear. Now you pick up another one of the pipe cleaners. I've shown some different people how to make these and every once in a while you get a person who tries to put the other ear on the opposite end of the same pipe cleaner. No, you pick up a different pipe cleaner and once again, about a finger's width in, 180 degree turn right there and then a 90 degree turn. And now you've got two ears. Once again, they are on different pipe cleaners. Okay. Now we're going to attach the head and the body. Once again, these are wood. This one is slightly smaller than this one. They're close enough in size, probably couldn't tell the difference. Even in person, you have to really scrutinize them. But will just, just me being annoying, I, I've scrutinized these enough to determine that this is apparently a, the smaller bead. So I'm going to use it for the head. This one will be the body. Once again, the hole down the middle needs to be large enough for both pipe cleaners, which can be a surprisingly small hole. But you just put the head on first, and then you put on the body. And you just 
run these up to the end, kind of position the ears, and there. We already have ears, a head, a body, and two really long legs. We can call this guy Bunny Long Legs. Now to attach the arm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position it right in between the two beads, but I'm going to position it slightly off-center. You have to look at the whole thing. You don't want it to be completely on center because you're going to fold one arm around to actually attach it. Um, so you want it to be slightly off-center so that when you do the fold, both arms will be the same length. So here we go. Boom. The ears are there. The arms are there. The legs are there. The arms are the same length. Once again, um, I've made enough of these that I've kind of determined which one is the front and which one is the back. And one thing that you'll notice is when you wrap around the arms to attach them, the arms will actually be located closer to one side than the other. And I've just decided that the side that they're closest to is the back, giving you a little bit more space up front for the neck region. Now, the pen comes in, and I'm not quite certain how to show you this on camera. I'm having to work within a confined space here so that you can actually see it. But what I'm going to do is you really just start spiraling this around the pen. Um, one thing that I like to do, you can easily just start spiraling and it won't matter. What I'm going to discuss here is something that I've started doing just because I've done this so many times. What I'll do is I'll start spiraling the legs first and once again this is just nitpicking those little bitty things that I think make a better looking bunny bear, but they're not required to do. What I do, there's this leg, here's the body, the leg closest to me, and I just start spiraling. What I'm doing, let's nitpicking, the reason why I'm not just simply spiraling is I'm working my way down this way and I am spiraling the leg outward from the body so that if you look at this you see there's the body and there's where I'm spiraling and I'm spiraling this in an up position here's the body here's the head here's up and I'm spiraling it in an up position you don't have to get this technical. You will wind up with an okay looking bunny bear. Um, but this right here just, it's something I started doing because it makes later phases a little bit easier. But what you want is a tight coil. You, you want the coil to be as tight as possible. It's still a coil. You don't want to overlap, but you want it to be tight enough to where it forms like a single cylinder. And once again, you've got the straight edge on the pin. You don't have anything ergonomic to make this impossible, so you just slide it out. And there you go. You've got one leg. Now we do the same thing with the other. Once again, yeah, there we are. Here's the body, here's the leg, so I'm going to coil it this direction. Or rather, this direction, going down instead of up. One thing you might notice while you're doing this is that you'll have to adjust the ears to keep them in the right place while you're coiling the leg. Here we go. Coil. 
really see what I'm doing there. I hope that you understand what I'm doing here. But yeah, you just make a nice tight coil, coiling from here going down. And it's coiling outward away from the other leg. So, boom, 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 boom. Make certain that you're enjoying yourself while doing this. Don't, uh, you know, if you don't want to be doing this, if you're not having fun with it, then go do something else. Life is too short to spend on things you don't enjoy doing. Um, allow yourself to fall in love with the little guy while you're making him. Okay, and here I've coiled up the other leg. Once again, non-ergonomic pen. Pull it right out. Now you got two legs. And what you got to do to move them into the standing position, you might want to leave them in the sitting position. That's certainly an option. But to move them into the standing position, you just push it together like that, push in the coil, fold it down, and push it up into the body like this, and let go. Other leg. Squeeze it down. Swivel it into the standing position and let go. And voila, we've got a couple of legs. You usually have to play around with it, get it looking right. But there, the legs are in place. Once again, front, back, doesn't really matter. It's just something that I do. I think it makes the finished product look a little bit better when I do it this way. And now I'm going to start coiling this leg, put the pen on top, so that it's coiling this direction. And I'm going to move it this direction along the pen as it turns into the arm. One little thing that I like to do that you may or may not care about is I like to coil the legs tighter than the arms. That helps with proportion a little bit more. But you'll have a perfectly fine looking little guy even if you coil them both at the same rate. But there we go. Now to do the other side, once again place the pen on top, gonna coil it this direction so that the shoulder naturally moves into position. And voila! Almost done here. The anticipation is tangible. This arm is forming a little bit longer than I liked, so I'm going to have to play around with it and squish it in a little more. There, pull that in. Let's kind of play around with the arms and the legs and the ears. A lot of times what happens when you're making these is the ears will start to get pulled down in when you're working with the legs. So a lot of times you'll have to pull the ears back out. But there you go. Here is a nice little gift for like 10 or 20 bucks. You can get enough materials to make hundreds of these guys if you're buying them at the right place. But yeah, you can buy the fuzzy sticks, the pipe cleaners, and a little container of beads pretty much anywhere. I just got mine at Walmart. So, you know, Walmart doesn't specialize in anything. So if you can find it at Walmart, you can find it in a specialty store, no problem. But yeah, there you go. And you can hand these out to random people on the street. I love you all. I hope that you enjoyed this. Until next time.